Welcome tonight to our Wednesday evening um, Bible study and devotion, and just um, welcome you to this time together as we open up God's Word. Um, tonight I'm going to be talking about David, and one of the times that he takes refuge in the shadow of um, the, the wings of God. What does that mean? And so I'm going to be talking about this object here. Um, this is a 3D printed um, Ark of the Covenant, and I'm going to share that tonight. And uh, kind of what does that mean in the context of David finding hope? So that's our um, theme this evening, hope living in the now and the not yet. And before we begin, um, Zach Booth is here this evening. He's going to be, will be opening us up in song and ask you just to allow the Lord to speak to your heart and open yourself up to him tonight. He's coming on the cloud, kings and kings will bow down. And every chain will break, his broken hearts declare his praise. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the lion. There's a phrase that you hear a lot, I hear it a lot, and the phrase is this, live in the moment, live in the now, be present. And if that means to live in the moment and not be distracted, like driving your car and you're not to text while you're driving, then I absolutely agree with that statement. If it means that you're in a conversation with someone and um, you're listening to what they're saying, you're giving them your full attention, rather than being distracted by something else. And I absolutely agree, live in the present. Um, pay attention to what you're doing, don't be distracted. But a lot of times people say that and they mean live in the now, live in the present without any thoughts towards the future. Well, there's a biblical term as to what that means to live in the present without thinking about the future. And the term is hopelessness because hope is about the future. Hope is living in the present with an understanding with, of the promises, of the expectations of the future. And that's what we're talking about tonight. We're talking about living in the present, living in the now, but also in the not yet, also in that which is yet to come. And our scripture tonight is going to be from Psalm 57. It is a story of David. I want to talk about that story briefly. Um, Psalm 57 actually begins with the title, and it reads, to the choir master, according to Do Not Destroy, which is some name of a tune somewhere, a miktam of David, when he fled from Saul in the cave. And the story of David fleeing from Saul, um, it's actually a section of scripture, and the, the war he's in the cave is 1 Samuel chapter 24. But just to tell you a little bit of the story, and it's, a, it's an amazing story, David was a young man on the rise, a very promising future. 
And he, it was so promising that it threatened the king. King Saul became jealous, became fearful of David, and um, had these fits of rage where he would actually try to kill David. And, and David began to figure out, my life is going to be short if I hang around here. And he actually told Saul's son, Jonathan, that I think your dad's trying to kill me. And Jonathan said, nah, it's just in your head. He's not trying to kill you. And they set up some plan to, to really to test this um, thesis out. And, and sure enough, Jonathan realized that his dad was indeed trying to kill his best friend, David. And so he gets David to flee. David flees. Saul becomes enraged that David flees and chases after him. David first goes to the priest, thinking that if I go to the priest, they're going to give me protection. They're going to defend me. And and the priests are powerless with Saul. In fact, Saul ends up killing a large number of them because they actually give bread to David. David then flees to the Philistines, thinking, well, the enemy of my enemy will be my friend. And the Philistines want his life. And David actually has to act insane to escape them. And he ends up going to a cave, absolutely depressed at the bottom, really at the, at, it's one of those places where you're in, in the bottom of life, a prophet comes to him and says, go back to Judah. Um, don't go to Saul, but go back to Judah. And David does that. He goes back to the area of Judah. He actually begins to protect the people of the land that he was hiding in. And he ends up hiding in a place called En Gedi, a place of just beautiful springs. But some of the people of the land, the people he's protecting, actually tell Saul, hey, David's down here. Why don't you come down here and get him? So David marches down to En Gedi. Um, and where David's hiding, and you know the story. Um, Saul goes into a cave to relieve himself, and David and his men are hiding in that cave, and all of David's men are saying to David, look, God's given Saul into your hand. Take his life. And these are not the mighty men. These are the scoundrels. These are the malcontents that had surrounded David at this time. And David refuses to do so, and instead he cuts off a piece of the cloth from King Saul's robe, and um, as Saul exits the cave and is a good distance away, David shows Saul, I could have taken your life, that I, but I did not. And um, Saul repents, but David is wise enough to not return with Saul. And that's the end of chapter 24. And I think it's this context that, that David is writing um, Psalm 57. And he's writing it at a time when he's being hunted. His life is in danger. He is in hiding. He is separated from his family. He has been betrayed by the people that he's trying to help. Yet he's done shameful things, just simply a part of his hiding and eluding Saul. It is a horrible time in his life. Um, but there's something about David. Um, he, Prior to this time, it's been promised to David through a covenant with God that he will be the king. He's been anointed. And because of this future promise, he knows that there will be a day when he will be in the palace and he'll be a place where he is loved. And, and, and he knows that his future is different. And so even though he's in a place of the now where he's hunted and, and betrayed and he's hiding there and he knows there is a future that is yet to come, that future impacts how he lives in the present. Thus, in the present he protects the people. He's doing the job of a king, even though he's not king. He refuses to raise his hand in violence against Saul. Um, and, and so these are some of the things that he does, living in the present by a future yet to be. And we see this present living by the future in how he begins his prayer to the Lord. Looking at Psalm 57 now, look at, let's look at verse 1. Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me, for in you my soul takes refuge. In the shadow of your wings I will take refuge, till the storms of destruction pass by. I cry out to God most high, to God who fulfills his purposes for me. Do you see the now he is in? The storms of destruction, that's his now. Do you see the not yet that he's looking towards that define how he lives in the now? His purpose is for me. That's the not yet. That's what he's looking towards. And as we read on, you can see the same pattern. Verse 3. He will send from heaven and save me. He will put to shame him who tramples on me. God will send out his steadfast love and his faithfulness. 
My soul is in the midst of lions. I will lie down amid fiery beasts. The children of man, whose teeth are spears and arrows, whose tongues are sharp swords. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. They set a net for my steps. My soul was bowed down. They dug a pit in my way, but they have fallen into it themselves. Do you see the now? The now of I'm being trampled. My soul is in the midst of lions. I lie down amid fiery beasts whose tongues are sharp swords. They set traps for me. But in the midst of the now, he is constantly looking towards the not yet, the things that God has promised. He will send from heaven and save me. His steadfast love and his faithfulness, he will be exalted in his glory over all the earth. In the midst of his present trouble, the now that is horrible, David looks to the future and he looks to the not yet and that not yet shapes his present. And because of the not yet, because of that hope that he has of looking to the future, he then begins to sing praises to his Lord. Verse 7, My heart is steadfast, O God, my heart is steadfast. I will sing and make medley. Awake, my glory, awake, O harp and lyre. I will awaken the dawn. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing praises to you among the nations. For your steadfast love is great to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. Amen. This is from a man hiding in a cave, being hunted down, unjustly accused, hated by the powerful, without his family, shamed and rejected. And he's giving thanks and praise and acts wisely. Why? Because he has a hope in a future that is yet to be. And so the question to you, where does your hope come from? Where does your hope come from? And I want to be clear tonight. I'm not saying that if you're having a bad day, you just need to be cheerful. Or that you need to give thanks for your bad day. Nor am I somehow or sharing a shallow platitude or or just telling you that here's God, you just need to cheer up right now. The hope that David has, the hope that he has, a reason his present circumstance is being transformed by a future glory, is not a product of wishful thinking. It's not a mindful exercise. It's not positive thoughtfulness. The hope that he has in the now because of the not yet is a hope that's not generated by him. It's a hope that he has received, promises he has been given. And here is the heart of being that person of hope. And, and, and I want to stress this. It's not having a big dream. It's not being super confident about something that you want. Rather, it is a hope that's, that's being given to you, that's being anchored in something outside of you. What is it, hope? Well, here it is for David. This is how he expresses it. Verse 1 and verse, verse 1 is very clear. Be merciful to me, O God. Be merciful to me, for in you my soul takes refuge. I love that phrase. In you my soul takes refuge. In the shadow of your wings I will take refuge till the storms of destruction pass by. This language is very important. And David's not using some nice piece of abstract poetry or religious piety to, to, to express just a general hope in the Lord. He is saying something very important. He's communicating the source of his hope. Notice the language. Be merciful to me, for in you my soul takes refuge. In the shadow of your wings I will take refuge. Does God have wings? Is he a giant chicken? No, he's not. That's silly. So what is David talking about taking refuge in the shadow of God's wings? I think he's talking about this. This is the Ark of the Covenant. Again, this is just a replica. The, the actual Ark would have been the size of my desk. And, and the Ark of the Covenant um, was the most sacred, holy object of the Israelites. It was the visible representation of the covenant that, that, that God had made with them. 
And inside of the ark would have been the, the Ten Commandments. Um, there, at one time, there would have been the rod of Aaron and, and a jar of, of manna representing, showing God's promises and blessings to them. And that Ten Commandments, not, it's actually the full testimony, the full law would have been inside. And it really represents the covenant that God had made with the Israelites. They are his covenant people. And on top of the ark would have been this lid that was called the mercy seat. And the mercy seat had two seraphs that you see here, and their wings are outstretched over it. And above the mercy seat, the Shekinah glory of God would come, and the high priest would come in front of it with the with using the blood from the atonement to purify that way. And there, God would meet man, and man would meet God. And it's there at this mercy seat where, where this covenant is encountered. So when David says, I take refuge in the shadow of your wings, I, I think he's talking about this. He's talking about not, 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 not so much as the literal Ark of the Covenant, but in the covenant that God has made with him. He's taking refuge in the covenant that God has established with him and with the Israelites. That's what he's talking about. Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me, in the shadow of your wings, I will take refuge. That's where he takes refuge. That's where he finds his comfort. That's where he looks to the promises of God in accordance to the covenant. David's hope is anchored in God's mercy, in his love, in his faithfulness towards his covenantal promises. That means his fears his anxious thoughts, his wants, his desires, he's handing them over to God in the context of the covenant. And because he is living in the shadow of the covenant, he sees life differently. David's present circumstances and pain and suffering and humiliation are shaped by the blessings and promises of the covenant. Thus he says, God's purposes will be fulfilled in me. He, he will save me. His love and faithfulness will be revealed. He will be exalted and glorified over all the earth. And it is this view, this not yet, this hope that he has that gives him courage and confidence and wisdom in the present, in the now. That's what it means to be a person of hope. So let me ask you again. What is your now? What are you going through right now? Health issues? Do you wake up in the morning and turn on your phone and look at the news and see a world of chaos, a nation, a community, and that just raises anxiety in you? Are there issues with finances or with job and, and um, or maybe struggling with just real personal sin and regret or shame? I'm not here to tell you tonight that it's all going to get better. I don't know what this future holds. I'm not here to say that this too shall pass. I hear a lot of people saying that. And, and maybe our world's going to be changed because of what we're going through right now. And I'm not here to tell you some nice platitudes to smooth over anxious hearts. Rather, I'm here to tell you that our God is a covenantal God. That he has established a covenant with us through the person of Jesus Christ. And the hope that we are to have is not a hope that this world can give, but it is a hope that he has given to us in the promises of Christ. What are those promises? What, are, what is the not yet that we can look to to shape our present? Well, here are some of the things that are in the shadow of the cross. We are promised to be inheritors of heaven. We are told that we will be receivers of forgiveness. The children of God, beloved of the Father, blessed by God's Spirit, filled with grace and eternal life. That we are recipients of a better covenant than what even David had. We have the new covenant. That is our mercy seat. That is the shadow of the cross that we've been given. And because of this hope, we can, with David, say, that God's purposes will be fulfilled. 
that his salvation will be revealed. His love and faithfulness will be the interpretive keys to our life, and they will be proclaimed in all of this land. And he will be exalted, and his glory will fill all of the earth. If you are listening tonight, and you belong to this new covenant that is found in Jesus Christ, remind your soul to take refuge in the shadow of the cross. That's where we go. And let your present actions and let your courage and wisdom flow from that future hope. And if you do not belong to the covenant, but God is at work in your life and you are moved, pray to him. Ask him to enter your life and to forgive you of your sins and draw yourself close to him. Let's close with this time of prayer. Let's pray. Gracious Father, I thank you for tonight. I thank you that we have a hope that is not of this world, but is a hope that comes from you that is sure and guaranteed. And because of that hope of the future, we can live in this world now and the present differently, Father. May we be a people of hope. And Lord, if there are people tonight who are listening, that you are calling to you, that their heart is moved by your spirit, I ask that they may cry out to you and call upon you and believe upon you and that you may receive them, Lord, and draw them close to you and surround them with people who will give to them good wisdom and instruction, Father. And they begin in this journey of, of finding refuge for their soul in the shadow of the cross, Lord. I thank you for this time. In Christ's name, amen. Zach's going to close us out in song and just allow the Spirit to speak to you during this time. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. The beauty that made this heart.
May the Lord bless you tonight. May you enjoy him and give him thanks and all glory. Um, hope to see you soon. God bless you. Bye.